Agent Nation, my name, of course, is Agent Beamstar. Let's get roll into the news. Ladies and gentlemen, this is gonna be the most action-packed, news-filled day of any drama alert yet, because Mike Wang was going on a spray on Twitter. But before we get to that, we got a couple stories to cover, so let's just get into it. You see how I did that, guys? Did you see that? Okay, let's do it. For our first story of the day, DeAndre Ayton, do you guys know him? The same guy that went out there and dropped off all those Park YouTubers. NBA player, first overall pick in the 2018 NBA draft. You know who I'm talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, he is a quintessential, he is the picture perfect definition of a 2K player, right? Some of these NBA players, they just kind of play 2K. They might have played it a couple times because their faces in the game. They might play it a little bit and think they're good. But DeAndre Ayton is actually good at the game. That's why he's dropping off all these YouTubers. You guys remember that previous story? Okay, DeAndre Ayton is on some news, ladies and gentlemen, because a video released of him raging after a loss on 2K, and I don't even really want to say much. Let's just roll the clip. <laughs> Bro, this I'm gonna break the fuck, bro. I hate 2K18. That's shit! <laughs> Don't ever put me in that fucking game! <laughs> that game is shit! I was so the fuck out y'all gonna put me in that fucking game! The fuck? Yo, where the controller at, bro? That game is shit! This man is for bums! <laughs> this dumbass nigga, bro! He's shit! Yeah, look at this! 16 to 17 was the best fucking game! <laughs> that game is shit! <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he sounds like he wants to be a 2K YouTuber at heart. He's a guy who actually plays this, right? He said this game is shit! He made that super clear, right? But after that, he said they made this game for bums. <laughs> I was like, yo, DeAndre, chill, my guy. Who's recording him? Is this a recent video? DeAndre, you might have sponsors now, my guy. You can't be talking crazy like that. Anyway, it was really, I was really excited to see that because it, it ah, yeah, for obvious reasons, you don't need me to explain. I thought it was a funny story. Let's move on to the next one. For our second story of the day, uh, NBA superstar and mega ultra famous person Spencer Dinwiddie was in the news because apparently he was frustrated with his NBA 2K rating. Not so much that he was frustrated with his NBA 2K rating, but he was frustrated relative to everybody else's ratings. He said this. On his Instagram, when they say the rooks are already... Whoa, I didn't mean to click actual. All right, whatever. Might as well follow you, bro. <laughs> When they say the rooks are already better than you at NBA 2K, basically taking shots at Mr. Stoff, the guy who does the ratings for 2K, he, he's, he's cheese, right? He's saying, yo, listen, these guys haven't played a game in the NBA yet. How do these guys have a rating as good as me, right? Because no rookie is actually rated better than him, but there are a few rookies that have the same rating as him. And he's saying like, yo, I played a decent season last year, right? And he's like, yo, I'm bound for this and this and this and this and this. He was even at the All-Star Weekend. You guys remember seeing him there? I was like, what is Spencer Dinwiddie doing here? But he was playing and he was doing pretty good. So uh, he's probably the first person this year in NBA 2K19 cycle to get mad or frustrated publicly about his NBA 2K rating. I thought it was interesting. For our next story of the day, and this story is a string of tweets from Mike Wang himself. The one and only. Mike Wang, I'm talking to you because I know you're on notification, gang. I know you be watching all my videos till the end because you know that if I get more watch time, then they're gonna put me on the homepage more and you wanna see my channel grow. Thank you, Mike Wang, I appreciate it. I'm talking to you right now. Get in contact with me, I have a brilliant idea. If you don't get in contact with me, I'm gonna get in contact with you somehow. I'm gonna fly to you, just let me know right now. That's not the story though. The story is the string of tweets. Let's get to the first one. First tweet verifying that using the takeover badge, it gives you a plus 10 bonus to your primary attributes and a plus five bonus to your alternate attributes. So someone asked the obvious question, great system, but if my dunk attribute is a 99, how will a plus 12 help me? He said, we have ways to boost your abilities beyond the 99 cap. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. You could pull away on NBA 2K with like a 109 three-point rating. Yeah, imagine that with all your badges, with a good release. <sighs> so obviously the concern was, listen, Mike Wang, sounds fun and cool if this was like an NBA street game. It's not. This is the NBA 2K game. And everyone, and Mike Wang replies saying, it's not as OP as it sounds, and I'll be monitoring the community closely every day to make sure all the builds are properly balanced. 
I was like, all right, Mike Wang, if you say so, my guy. But you guys haven't been the greatest when it comes to balance, so I don't really know how much I could trust that, but Mike Wang, I trust you. Keep mind, give me a call, send my email, it's on my Twitter, I need to get in contact with you. Mike Wang then proceeds to just make a bull-faced lie. He replies to someone on Twitter saying this. We've never once targeted an individual jump shot to patch or nerf it. There's no reason for us to do it, and it would be a very tedious process even if we wanted to. I know many won't believe it, but it's one of those 2K conspiracy theories that's not true. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go back in time. Do you guys remember when I dropped my 79-point game and I broke Pro-Am in NBA 2K17? The release I was using was Curry. Do you remember the next week after that? Curry was broken for everybody. I didn't even think it was, I was trying to fight through it because I'm not first to jump and say something's broken because some days you're gonna have an off day. I really test stuff. On top of that, shout out to my guys at NBA 2K Lab. They have, they have a modded controller where there's no sort of user error possible and they get the fucking scientific, statistical, precise numbers. So Mike Wang, you have been changing the numbers throughout the year. Not only can I tell, because I'm the greatest sharpshooter in the history of 2K, but NBA 2K Lab has the numbers if you don't trust my expertise, to put it that way. So I don't believe you. Is not no conspiracy. We saw you do it in 17 throughout. We saw you do it in 18 throughout. And like, you're not gonna try and convince me otherwise. There's too much proof of it over the years. On top of that, if you don't take empirical data as proof, or you're just gonna say, agent, that's circumstantial, it's not. We got the numbers, nba2klab.com. Shout out to those guys, man. They really put in some work. So somebody replied saying, first of all, thanks for the response. And with that being said, uh, can every shot have the same success rate? Like Annoying TV suggested that the Kobe shot should work just as well as the LaMarcus Aldridge shot because a lot of people want to use their own shot. And Mike Wang said, in theory, they should all have the same success rate. Hey, it's Mike777. Yeah, Sherlock. They don't want us to have a, some sort of advantage with jump shots. That's why they're patching them when one gets really good. They want them all to have the same success rate. But the reality is, there is some jump shots where it's just way easier to hit the green window than other jump shots. That's just the nature of it. And it's not a personal preference thing a lot of the time, right? It's really just a matter of latency. If I have the same latency as you, there's no reason me and you, regardless of preference, shouldn't be hitting the same percentage of greens if we're equally as talented and skilled at timing our jump shot. That's what I'm saying. They all wanted to have the same success rate. He just said in that tweet. So I don't believe that they're not patching stuff because they want to reach their end goal of having them all have the same success rate. They just contradicted himself. That's all I believe. Anyway, that's just... That's just what I was into. Next tweet. Zigzagging is fixed and the logic around blow bys has been completely overhauled. You can still get them in the right situations, getting to defender's hip, extreme mitch matches, etc. But if you play good on ball defense, you should be able to clamp ball handlers pretty easily. I found it interesting Mike Wang used the word clamp. He's good with the lingo. I see you, Mike Wang. They did say the same thing last year. And if you guys remember, before the big patch, like three or four months in, shot creators and sharpshooters were hitting the nastiest, like one zigzag, two zigzag, three zigzag. So I will, we'll wait to see in the game till if it's actually fixed. This is like the third time they've said that zigzagging was fixed, but hopefully this time they're right and they got everything down. Dude, dude, what the hell, man? Yo, oh my God. <laughs> Somebody asked Mike Wang, will the green percentage be higher in the takeover mode? He replied, yes. Interesting, let's move on. Desmond asked, can a sharpshooter still hit me with a snatchback and have an open three 100% of the time? Mike Wang replied, nope, snatchbacks can't be cheese like that this year. Thank you. Guys that went to the 2K event a couple weeks ago in LA also said the same thing when it came to play now. So it seems like the snatchback caught a huge nerf, so thank God. So of course my immediate reply was, how about the blow buys on the park and the pro-am? And somebody linked me to a tweet he put out just earlier saying, well it was a zigzagging tweet talking about blow buys and stuff. So apparently blow buys, huge nerf. So if you guys remember the way NBA 2K16 ran, like blow buys existed and they should always exist for a player that's out of position or if you have a horrible defensive rating, right? But if you're playing good defense, then there's no reason they should just be able to walk by you. And that's the way 2K16 was. And it seems like they're going back to that now with the blow buys and with the, the nerf of snatchbacks, there's always gonna be some new sort of dribble cheese and some animation that's next level. So I hope 2K stays on top of things, but the two biggest problems I have with 2K18 are fixed. I only wish they were fixed sooner and I could have enjoyed 2K18. But 2K19, it seems like that was a focus and at least there's that.
Mike Wang put out a tweet gassing up lockdown defenders, said defense is a major focus for 19. I mentioned this before, but a good lockdown or rim protector is going to be very valuable this year. They will cancel out offensive boosts, get special defensive stop resolutions and body ups, unique block content, and more. I heard this the last two NBA 2Ks, so I do not believe it, but on the chance that he is true, if you guys remember in 17, lockdown defenders were just poking the ball loose left and right. In 2K18, their stealing wasn't nearly as good, so honestly, that's the biggest thing with a lockdown. Can I interrupt your dribbling process by just spamming square? Is it annoying and takes no skill, and that's why people hate lockdowns? Yes, but that's the way the game works, and I hope that they don't make it overpower for 2K19. But lockdowns might be the wave. Listen, all I'm saying is this. If you're locked down and you can't shoot three-pointers, I still don't want your ass on my team. Because if you can't spread the floor, you're going to be useless regardless of how good lockdowns are. Period. Okay, this is the part that got me really interested. See, he's dropping all kinds of news. Really, this is a lot of the stuff that when 2K drops an event, we expect people to come back with this type of information. But we're getting it from Mike Wang himself. So it's like... Would you rather get street heroin or the pure heroin, right? <laughs> that was a horrible analogy. Please don't demonetize my video. Mike Wang said, shooting algorithm has been changed quite a bit for 19. Shot contest detection is more sensible now. Bigger bonuses and bigger penalties for open versus contested, as well as good versus bad timing. Yes! That's what I like to hear, baby. Excellent window is smaller but gives bigger boost. I.e. shooting will be more skill based. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Wang has done it. If what he's saying is true, Mike Wang, I did drop a video called Dear NBA 2K. You might want to watch that. Although I'm pretty sure you've watched it six times now. Downloaded the video, put out an image, printed it on your wall. Because you're that in depth with my videos and I appreciate that. I'm going to tell you right now, people will come with you with the pressure. People are going to be mad that it's skill based. Because people don't want it to be skill based. Garbage players want the game to be shit. So that they can be good. But they're not good. They're ass. So let's remind them that they're ass right now, me and you, Mike Wang. That's how games do it. When I play Rainbow Six and I die to a diamond, I'm reminded that I'm ass, and it humbles me. I got a long way to go and a lot to improve, and it gets me to continue playing the game. All right, Mike Wang recognizes that with his tweet. Easily the one I'm most excited for, and one that he's already alluded to in the past, but it's good to see him go more in depth with. I like to see, man. So this one is the one that kind of just broke Twitter for a little bit. There was a lot of people furious Mike Wang made this change, and there was a lot of people like, about time, finally, Mike Wang made this change. So somebody hit up Mike Wang and said, are you able to force a ball handler to pick up dribble? It was not in 2K18 from what I've seen. Mike Wang, please do not put that in the game. Clicking square to steal takes no skill. If that's all it takes to interrupt someone's dribble, it's going to be super duper bullshit. Six seconds on the clock, all you do is you want to go to the basket to interrupt your dribble. Don't, don't, don't do that the way it was in 17. Incredibly frustrating. But Mike Wang replies, yes, the frequency is based on the dribbler's ball control versus defender's on-ball D rating, as well as positioning. It'll happen more if you cut the dribbler off and... Oh, that's not the tweet I was looking for. I, I really hope that's not the, that, that wasn't it, that wasn't the one. The tweet I was looking for! New dribble fatigue models in 19. If you over dribble, your ball control will drop and your moves will degrade in speed slash effectiveness. So spamming too many moves will drop your dribble tier and eventually cause you to fumble the ball. Need to be efficient with the ball this year. Now, they said that last year and you're still able to dribble spam in 2K18. But if what he's saying is true right now, you won't be able to dribble for 24 seconds, the entire shot clock, and get that ankle breaker. You won't be able to do that no more. And part of me is like, ah, it's so frustrating to see people do it. Thank God it's changed. But the other part of me is like, yo, when I'm up like 20 to three and I just wanna have fun and sauce the opponent, I like the option of being able to, to do those dribble moves and have fun. And I feel like it might take away from that fun factor as much as it might take away from the cheese of people that like to dribble spam. I mean, there's way more tweets. There's tweets about how Mike Wang's saying, now when you do a pump fake, you can actually, and somebody jumps. If you do a pump fake and somebody jumps, you can actually bait them into the foul. So you can't spam and click triangle. He talked about how they had some sort of block engineer and now chase down blocks are gonna be back in 19. In 18, they were harder to do and they usually resulted in fouls. But now if you're some sort of rim protector, you can like swat that shit on the backboard, etc., etc. They also reduced the time it takes to get three in the key. In 2K18, it took, if, and if you counted, you'd know, five seconds for them to call three in the key. So a lot of people just camped in the key, and they used to just hold circle and do a lot of cheese. Mike Wang apparently reduced that time, giving those guys less time to pull off their cheesy antics. There was a lot more, and it's cool that Mike Wang is coming out with all this information, and I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. 
He's saying all the things I want to hear. He's saying, yo, agent, there's going to be a skills gap when it comes to shooting, right? He's saying uh, when it comes to blocks, that's been overhauled. They've said the post game's been overhauled. They talked about some of the flashy dribbling animations that they plan on introducing. Of course, the new crab dribble. Now you can morph Euro steps into floaters or dunks. Like, they continue to go on and on. Of course, snatchbacks and blowbys. They have yet to say something about the servers. It'd be nice if they're like, yo, we improved this and this in the servers, but I doubt that. That rarely ever happens because it always ends up biting them in the ass when the game comes out and the servers are flat out garbage. Dare I say I'm a little excited. I try not to get excited no more because that just leads to disappointment. I just take things for what they are. But yo, if he's saying he solved the biggest issues in 18 is the blowbys and the snatchbacks, if he's saying that since it's a new 2K, there's gonna be no sort of animation glitch, so players won't have animations that they're not supposed to have, that the meta is gonna be restored, if he's saying that there's gonna be a lot of archetypes reborn and revived, he's saying that they actually focused on the things that the community was asking for, then I'm getting a little bit enticed now, right? But I know that this is their, this is what they do. This is what Activision does, this is what Take-Two does, this is what 2K does, is they get you hyped for their game some way, somehow. So I, I have a live skepticism, but at the same time, I'm really hoping everything's gonna pan out, bro, because if it does, 19 is gonna be crazy. Yo, that's really all there is for the news, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Mike Wang's been kind of on a tear the last few days on Twitter, so I always have my notifications on Twitter. I recommend you do the same if you care enough about this news as much as I do. If you guys enjoy, drop a like. Click on one of these two videos right here, or I'm fighting you. Link in the description to my podcast. We dropped a new episode. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.